we are going to go read from Vi, which is for all you taken and single bi- I'm not going to finish that sentence. But since it is the Valentine's Day season, yes, I know I'm really late, okay? It's fine, all right? All right. I was busy, okay? But since it is February, we are going to be doing a little lovely dovey. I can't even say that right. I'm so single, I can't even say lovely. Lovey, lovey, okay. A lovey dovey comic. Well, actually, they're not very good at it. But we'll we'll get into that. It has romance in it, however. Is it toxic romance? All right, seriously, though, we're going to get into it, okay? So, welcome to Nachi Comic Reviews, where I go over these awesome comics made by awesome people and see what is so amazing about them. And not so amazing, but still very cool. So, let's get into the first part of the episode, which is usually the background and the summary. And that is going to be Drew for today. <clears throat> Alex is a half-witch singer who represses his magical powers to get a normal life and succeed as a musician. But magic and witches are not something you can escape from. It always finds a way to interfere with your life. Oblivion is a story about magic, personal growth, and internal struggle. LGBTQ! Woo! But also, you know, alcohol and drug abuse and depression. And it's also 18+. plus. Anyways, warning's done. Let's go to a concert. And I'm not singing in it. She's a runner, she's a track star. It was the only time I was going to have that happen in a video. So, no more singing from Nachi Hero. But we will see these other hot people sing. Kyla, Emmett, Milo, Isaac, Isaac. He's either Isaac with like a weird spelling or it's Isaac. Don't know. Anyways, and our main character, Alex. And you see what I mean by the hot people, right? Just, I'm, I'm not the only one who sees it. Okay, good. But after the concert, they're meeting up with their fans, talking about band stuff and an ex-girlfriend trying to manipulate you and blowing up your phone. Fun! Right? Remember when I was saying there was romance and toxicity in this? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, but what is fun is my favorite character design in this entire comic, Maya. What is with me in Maya's? Didn't the other comic also had a Maya that I was obsessed with? Am I just obsessed with the name Maya? Nah, it's fine. And also, it seems like it's Alex's favorite, too. Because we're going to go see the two of them flirt, which actually works, like, immediately. They didn't even say words to each other. They just, it was an immediate effect. Maybe it's the magic going on. I don't know. Who has this much charisma? I mean, technically, he is a singer, and singers are usually the most, like, fond after in uh, the band stuff. So, I, I guess, but still. And also, look, they're doing a little kiss. Wait, actually, this kind of looks weird. Um, well, there it is. Magic changed into him and he is kind of freaking out, but I think he still had a good time. Okay, he definitely did have a good time. Um, I don't want to read this, but um, you, you can probably see it on the screen. It's fine. They're just wrestling. Yeah, but also he doesn't remember anything. But as they wake up and he finds her in his bed, hello, she reveals that she is an illusion witch and also kind of tells us that he's a powerful empathic witch. He's an empath. Oh my god. But it seems like he doesn't really want anything to do with us anymore or with her. And yeah, she leaves. But a few days later, we're at their record shop where Isaac, their drummer, I think has a little crush on another girl working there, which is very adorable. But anyways, remember that ex texting Alex earlier, the one that actually isn't adorable whatsoever and is kind of toxic? Yeah, well, they're not only just texting Alex, they're also texting his friends after she was blocked. Th this is this is bad news right here. If you're blocked and you're still trying to figure out how to get with your boyfriend again, yeah, no, I think that's an ex-boyfriend, honey. I, I think you have to move on there. God, I said honey. Oh, that's weird coming out of my mouth. However, but Kayla has a hacker friend coming to a party that they're going to later that night that might be able to help. But before going anywhere else, she tries to help him get his memories back from the other night, explaining that after his after his unknown to her panic attack, she was trying to talk to him with no avail. Finally snapped out of it and asking for some of Isaac's um angel dust. Yeah, the spider. Yep, don't look too much into it. And from then on, he doesn't remember anything else. She has to go and get ready for the party later that night. Which Alex is happy that she does not suspect anything, and no one will as long as he stays away from any witches. Before I get sad about the fact that we're not going to be seeing Maya for a bit, how about we get to the party? Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad, no. Nope, not mad here. No, no, nope, I'm not salty, no. To the party, we see everyone is amazing as usual. Not as amazing as Maya, because Maya isn't here. But anyways, why are they all, like, really hot for some reason? Like, is anyone in this world allowed not to be hot? Anyways, we get to see their hack her friend Keith he definitely looks like a Keith I don't know he just gives very much Keith but he is very adorable and Alex gets to explaining what's going on with his ex which I think Keithing Keithing which I think Keith already has taken a liking to Alex just look at him trying to learn more about him but he is able to do his work even with all of the party shenanigans and I definitely think he has the hots for him so freaking adorable and I think it's being reciprocated and smoothly might I add god but in true rom-com fashion they get interrupted at the worst moment and it is hilarious I love Kayla more than anything but just as we think the moment has passed Keith drags 
drags Alex into the bathroom. I would never have expected it from Keith, but okay. But just as this video is going to get demonetized, who am I kidding? I'm not monetized. But if I was, I would be saved because manic shenanigans. I think he got too excited. <laughs> but things are floating. He's bleeding. And Keith doesn't even notice. How the heck does he? Okay. And also, why is he so nice? He's so worried about his health, even though he's terrified of blood. This is adorable. But Alex leaves them in their mess, much to Kayla's disappointment. She is a true matchmaker. But Keith is on the phone as Alex drives off into the rain, crying, having his true rom-com emo moment. You know, when the stupid miscommunication climax happens in the end of the film and they kind of think, oh my god, is the relationship going to be over? Oh my god. And the other one has to win back and chase after that car or something. I don't know. Rom-com stuff. I don't really watch rom-com. Can you tell? <laughs> but just as I think he's about to do something, he gets called Craven? Who? And his mission. Wait, he was just interrogating he knows about the witch and he did not just say that alex was manipulatable what happened to my adorable keep i don't want craven who knows but you'll have to see when you read this comic the description is below so to the rest of the episode story and art i'm putting both of these into just one segment because the art is so good and the story is so good there isn't much to talk about so we're just gonna smush them together so let's get into it the story is really cool it can really suck you in other than just the hot characters however but i will say the panels can be a little cluttered for space like with bubbles and extra effects so on and so forth which i love the detail and it's not necessarily talking about the art or the backgrounds or anything because i love all of the art but more so the amount of effects and text and stuff on the foreground can be a little busy at times and it's hard to tell where to go and who's talking first and so on and this kind of gets into my next point as well and that is that the plot is a little hard to read in the beginning. I feel like we're being dropped right into the middle of it all, which is good storytelling, don't get me wrong. Since usually most people go with the big old intro, usually saying with like, I don't know, narration talking about the gods that were made from the dust of space and they made the people and one day they were mad and tried killing the humans and making the planet a desert, blah, 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 blah. Very long, very boring. But instead, you put us right to the story, which I definitely appreciate. Sometimes it feels like we're just supposed to know what's going on, like just already know the characters and everything, but since we're still in the beginning of the story like it's a little bit too fast-paced but basically i feel like we're already supposed to be a couple chapters in when we're in the first chapter i guess you can say like we kind of need multiple episodes to kind of figure out everything which for me at least it took until i think episode 10 before i felt like i really knew the basics of what's going on and with the short episodes it doesn't really help with this problem so i feel like we need a little bit more context and also maybe slightly longer episodes since i feel like i need to go back and reread when i forgot something that happened but having to go through a bunch of smaller episodes makes that a little hard so even if it's a slightly longer episode this might help because right when i feel like i'm getting interested the episode's already over but after a couple of episodes it's smooth sailing and the humor is hilarious the friends feel very real with each other i can tell all of their personalities apart which for me is always a very hard thing to get right so super good job and the twists are twisting they're not like completely out of pocket so like you can see it now when you went back and read everything you can see the red flags in keith god dang it there were red flags in keith as much as he was adorable he hid the red flags within the adorable it's like a cat they're very soft and fluffy from the outside but they will scratch out your eyeballs anyways at least i don't know maybe he's better later on maybe we don't know the full story again go read the comic it's a very good comic like you see this art right here it's a super good comic anyways i love it when stories kind of like twist of like the person you thought was good this entire time is at least morally gray or very bad this is Keith. Like, he was looking and investigating into Alex's personality and everything. Like, you can see that now. There's a checklist going on in his head being like, oh, this is what Alex is. Doing a whole personality profile cheat thing, whatever. But I just thought he was trying to get to know him. My red flag sensors are completely off at this point. I read too much dark romance. God dang it. The episode was even called Stalker. I am dumb. It's just amazing storytelling because I never expected it. But now I read read it, read read it, I reread it, and I see it now. Good job. Anyways. But other than that, there's also some grammar mistakes, which can be a little hard to follow, which can kind of go into how the plot is a bit hard to read if you can't read the sentences too well. But after a couple of rereads, I was able to understand what you're trying to say. So keep an eye out on that, or maybe just reread it yourself once you're done. Or maybe have a friend read it over. Because that's what I do. Thanks, Toby. It is so bad that if somebody sees my script, it will cause any grammar nerd to go into a coma almost immediately, if not immediately. Because I have the exact same problem every time. But anyways, something related to this is the text in the boxes are tipping at that edge of too much text in a single bubble, as well as too many bubbles within a single panel. So right on that edge, like how I did. Who am I kidding? I still do that. But I try to help it by limiting four bubbles for each panel 
and to have it so you can fit a capital H in each corner of the bubble between the edge of the bubble and the text. It should be able to help. Now let's see, other than that, da, 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 da. amazing character design, engaging story, better composition stuff with the bubbles, longer episodes, help the storytelling, amazing art, bubble troubles. That's a really funny word, bubble troubles. That's amazing. Anyways, uh, yep, I think that's everything. There isn't really any big art problems to do a tutorial in this episode for. I'm also very much running late on recording this episode. Usually these episodes usually take like, I don't know, two-ish weeks to make, but it is currently February 28th. The end of the month is, um, tomorrow. Okay, um, I really need to get the recording to this. Okay, um, so this is the end of, or this is going into the ending segment of the Lovey Dovey Romance episode of Comic Reviews. Happy Valentine's, everyone. Dang it. So, in conclusion, God, these scripts are turning into school papers. I thought I left that in school, but back to it. This comic is great. I'm not the only one who thinks of that, so great job at building your community and overall comic. There's only really a few little issues I can pick out, and, and when the most serious of them would be the clearness of the plot. I guess I don't know how to explain it simply, and even then, I was able to figure it out. So if that's the worst it gets, I think you're doing pretty well. So I would definitely recommend this to anybody who likes some drama, supernatural, magic stuff, and of course for the LGBT stories, which I always love. And there's hot by witches like what's not to love though as much as i don't have a tutorial in this episode of the comic reviews i have been making them in my shorts not literally in the playlist will be in the card above or in the description below i think they're educational and fun god dang it i sound like a high school teacher but of course they're also the ones from previous episodes so well yeah that's everything so subscribe if you'd like to see more of the art related videos but bye for now but also, um, if anyone who's ever liked any of my more skits or Batman-related uh, videos and Marvel stuff, um, go to my TikTok, which will be the new home of these videos. So, um, make in bio. Bye!